<clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Spiewak. Well, welcome, graduates. I met with uh, our, our graduates today. We were talking about what a wonderful time that we've had at, at Grand Lake School. Uh, so congratulations to all the parents, all the siblings, all the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents, and all the relatives. You should be, be very proud of yourself. I am very proud of this class. And so uh, just for a moment, I'd like to give you a round of applause. I asked them today, well, I've, I've got a couple of remarks to say. What would you like me to say? And they said, well, tell a couple of the stories. All right, well, let's go back to kindergarten. So uh -oh. we had the old five-year-old Allie Pierce pull the fire alarm. Right? She told me, she got called to the office, and said, what happened? She goes, well, it said pull. P-U-L-L. -L. So let's see, what do we have from that? We have a four-letter word. Five-year-old kindergartner reading a four-letter word. Well, that's quality education. Mrs. Bowen's up on the stage. Well done. We're teaching these students to read at an early age. <laughs> and they said, well, tell the justice story. So justice in fifth grade. I know, they said uh, this, this might not go over well because uh, we were doing a basketball tournament and one of the uh, 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 intermission bits were the Harlem Globetrotters where we switch a bucket of water with confetti. We throw the confetti on the kindergarten and they think it's water. So I think we know that sort of routine. The problem was my hand was wet. So I had the confetti bucket which slipped out of my hand, flew through the air, and was stopped by a justice. And I think maybe in his space. And we at that point, Justice, learned a very important lesson. It's called Newton's Law of Motion. <laughs> when an object is in motion, it tends to stay in motion until it hits something. So at a very young age, we were learning some critical components about physics. So again, very educational. <laughs> and I said, well, what do you want me to say in the eighth grade? There's no real moment like that. Because they couldn't pinpoint one person. Because it was all. It was all the graduates. And when I look, you can't see, but I can see on the sign, that says to be safe, be respectful, and be responsible. That's what these students have done. And that's what these students represent. You should be very, very, very proud of these students. I am. One more time, I'd like to thank you and congratulate you on a job well done. I'm going to turn over to Mr. Tomei, and we'll begin our program of speeches. Thank you, Dr. O'Brien. So our first speaker is our Looking Back speech, Allison Pierce. Good evening. Welcome family, faculty, staff, board of trustee, Mrs. Plath, Dr. O'Brien, and last but not least, class of 2017. Today we embark on one of the most important days of our lives. Even though some of us may separate, we will never forget all the amazing memories we have made together. As I stand here in front of everyone, I realize how many memories we have made throughout the past 10 years. We have all had such an impact on each other, and I would like to thank everyone that devoted their time to make sure we have became the best people possible. Every year that I have spent at Grassley School, we have all grown and learned so much. This has not only bettered me, but it has made everyone in my class ready for the future. From the first day of pre-K, my backpack was bigger than me, to being here in this moment with all of you. This school has been with me through it all. One of my personal favorite moments at Grass Lake School from kindergarten was my first visit to the principal's office after accidentally pulling the fire alarm. Sorry. <laughs> in kindergarten, I also met, met many new faces and friends. However, the scariest part was moving down to the elementary hallway. Moving from the corner of my, the room to joining the whole school, the older kids towering over us. Even though transferring into Miss Demons was scary, she could always calm us down on her puzzle mat with her books. For the next four years, Mrs. Sweeney, Ms. Tobiaski, Mrs. Phillips, and Ms. Gobel were our teachers. Ms. Sweeney taught us how to be ourselves with the All About Me projects. That's why I would like to thank her for bringing us all closer as a class. I won't forget all the field trips we wanted in Ms. Tobiaski's third grade class. After that, our class advanced to Ms. Phillips' fourth grade class, where we learned the bone song, the state song, and did a short in-class in play, The Villain in the Toy Shop. 
Lastly, Ms. Goebel's fifth grade class prepared us for everyday life lessons. For example, she taught us how to present and prepare speeches throughout our own traditional family, family recipes. I still have our tasty class cookbook today. These four teachers were the foundation of our junior high education. In 2015, we were all in sixth grade, dancing together for a medieval banquet. Not only did we trip over a few dresses, but we made a memory as a class. Thanks to Mr. Tomei, who we went back in history and made, became royalty for a day. We make memories as a class, but I made some of my own special memories as well. When I first entered junior high, I couldn't figure out the bell system and ended up joining the mob of people running to the classes. The first class I arrived at was Ms. Juszczyk's gym class. Little did I know that Ms. Juszczyk was going to change all of our lives and motivate our class to become better athletes. She once said, there is a difference between an athlete and a participant, and that word is dedication. Further in our sixth grade year, Ms. Sikowski, Mr. Kuhn, and Mr. Grosso directed a school play called Into the Woods. Into the Woods and Through the Fear, you have to take the journey. I was proud to be a part of this play, and it represents our class as a whole, because the journey we are about to make is to become sequins. Together, our class can accomplish anything, such as the time we hosted a Halloween reading with Ms. Lafredo. I do notice one member of this class is missing. Ms. Lafredo, did you ever manage to find Buster? Ms. Lafredo and Ms. Blanus both opened our minds and made us think more creative and use our imagination. Seventh grade prepared us for trying new things. However, one of the things I don't think any of us were prepared for was seeing what the inside of a frog looked like. <laughs> Ms. Kingery definitely helped us see the world in a different way. Thanks to Ms. Kingery, our class learned not only Spanish, but Espanol with the help, extra help of Mr. Blevins. Another teacher that greatly influenced our class was Ms. Ryan. Ms. Ryan taught us how, about reading and writing essays. Her own presentations were so cool, she designed a whole presentation on our cats. With learning new information, our class learned how to program apps and write essays. Throughout the year, she has well prepared us for high school. Another way her, our classes came together is through sports. Throughout the year, sports were a way for us to push ourselves not only as students, but as athletes as well. Go Braves! One of my favorite years would have to be 8th grade. We'll never forget all of our inside jokes in Mrs. Briggs' math class. Thank you for being our last homework teacher, even if you wanted to put all our stuff in the lost and found. <laughs> Although Mr. K started a new chapter in his life, he left us with many great stories and memories. He actually introduced me to one of my favorite books, The Divergent Series. Also, our whole class enjoyed meeting Ben Michelson, who wrote Touching Spirit Bear. Our reading class is always, as Mr. K would say, mad exciting, because of all of his he always listened to Mr. K's literature rap songs. This year has been bittersweet, knowing that our whole class will have to let go and move on to our new high school lives. But we know that Grass Lake will forever be a part of us. I'm so excited and honored to be part of this year's 2017 graduates. As author Rachel Watchman once said, we must be brave enough to travel the unknown path and live what we are capable of. This quote best describes this graduating class because we all must use our own experiences at Grass Lake School to see what we will be capable of next year at Sequence. Congratulations and best of luck to this 2017 graduates. We will always be a brave at heart. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And our next speaker with the Looking Forward speech will be Cassidy Hoxtower. students, board of trustees, staff, faculty, Dr. O'Brien, and Ms. Plath. Thank you for attending this event so special to the graduates here today as we say goodbye to Grass Lake School and all the teachers and other students that are making it worth it. I personally have been looking to my future ever since I was little. Ever since I was first asked that question, what are you going to be when you're older? I just think about what life really will be like when I'm older. Of course, the usual will happen. I'll get a job and start working, get a house and have a family, the usual stuff, you know, the American dream. 
Um, then the thought came to me, what if the usual doesn't happen to me? What if I don't get a job, or I don't get a house or a family? That what if pushed me to want to do better. So many things are going to change in high school. Everything we have finally gotten used to will be soon forgotten. Every teacher we know and love from Grass Lake will no longer be able to, <laughs> to see us grow up and become the so-called mature adults we are expected to become in the future. This is a lot of pressure. Some people might be scared of what lies in their future, but I'm ready. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this moment as soon as I started junior high. This is the end of our middle school life and the start of our high school life. I finally made it to the beginning again. The beginning in high school where I will begin to look forward to college and the amazing future I have ahead of me. The amazing future where I'll be a neurosurgeon, have an amazing family, and finally get to the point where there is no beginning again, just life as it is. You know, life where we pay bills, shop for our groceries, and take care of our children who will also be in the same position I am today. At the beginning again. This fascinating beginning where some of us have no idea what lies in the future. The future might be a mystery to some, but not me. I know what an unbelievably bright future I have the potential for that to possess, and I am determined to make it just that. Tony Robbins, a self-help self book author, author <laughs> once said, remember, anything you want that's valuable requires you to break through short-term pain in order to gain long-term pleasure. This quote really sticks with me. For example, whenever I don't feel like doing something, I think of this quote. This quote puts that what if, what if idea in my head again. That what if I don't turn in this homework assignment and it could possibly change my chance at a better college or a better future. That what if I don't study for this one quiz and it ruins my whole grade and I fail. But what if I push through it? Like Tony Robbins said, just short term pain. Meaning the pain and struggle of having to do something you don't want to do will only last for a little and then will lead to such a better outcome and maybe even a better future for yourself. This quote has helped me through many tough times and I hope it inspires you too and my fellow graduates to push yourself to do better. I just want to take this moment to say thank you to everyone for coming to our 2017 8th grade graduation and congratulations to all my fellow graduates. Great job, Cassidy. Hey, both of them, Allison and Cassidy, hey, one more time, give it up. Yeah. And now for our graduation address, Dr. O'Brien. So, uh, uh, all right, well, we're going to a very nice time. We're going to do a celebration, a little bit of ourselves. This does, in a short amount of time, our, uh, our graduates. But uh, just out of curiosity to show our staff, how many people, if you could just raise your hand, how many people in the room are graduate from Grass Lake School? <laughs> so welcome all graduates that have returned. And some of those hands are... Uh, I didn't know if I saw any grandfathers. I definitely saw fathers. And a celebration of it is with our staff, too. So you'd heard from our student, from Allie, and, and uh, just a celebration of, of the past of students and, and the teachers to come forward. Uh, throughout the room, there are several teachers seated. I can see them. I'd like to welcome them. And of course, on the stage, we have uh, our staff. And at this point, it's going to be my great honor uh, to introduce our board presidents. Uh, Dr. John Frendreis to come up and introduce our staff member of the year. Thank you, Dr. O'Brien. Uh, when I, uh, uh, as most of you know, I'm, I'm new to the board, and when I was told that uh, one of my uh, honors would be to present the Staff Member of the Year Award, I was really delighted. Um, you may or may not know that I am myself an educator. I work at Loyola University where I've spent most of my adult life as a, as a teacher. And at the university level, we think that we're training teachers and engineers and scientists and writers. But the real truth is, is that the spark that creates teachers and engineers and scientists and writers actually starts here. It starts in buildings like this uh, across the country. And the reason that, that that happens is because of great teachers. When great teachers work with students, wonderful things happen. And so uh, 
it's going to be my duty to, or honor rather, to introduce the staff member of the year, but I'd like us all to join in a round of applause for all of the teachers and the staff that are here and for all they've done for, for our students. So each year the board uh, uh, District 36 recognizes a uh, Grass Lake School employee for their commitment to our school. And this year's recipient is our second grade teacher, uh, Mrs. Nicole Sweeney. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mrs. Sweeney is, is someone who uh, exhibits outstanding personal and professional qualifications that make her the ideal recipient for this year's Staff Member of the Year Award. Uh, in addition to being a wonderful educator and an involved staff member, uh, she's known throughout the school uh, for her optimistic outlook in any situation. Uh, and uh, she's always cheerful. She is known to greet everyone with a smile. And her positive perspective is contagious when she interacts with everyone, whether it's students or family members or members of the public. Uh, and, and this kind of positive outlook is something she instills in her students as well. Uh, she's enthusiastic, she's compassionate, she's creative, uh, she's a wonderful staff member uh, and a credit to Grass Lake School. So it's my honor, my great honor really, to present Mrs. Sweeney, the 2017 Staff Member of the Year Award. I know. That's why I'm hoping with the. Who's got the camera? Can, okay, Amanda? Our first member of the class of 2017, Cassidy A. Alfaro. <laughs> Danielle Anderson. Yeah. AJ David Cameron. When Jeremy Corcoran. <laughs> Justice Erickson. Cassidy Hochstedler. Nikita girl. <laughs> James A. Hope.
Jonathan M. Hope. Sean Kiever McFarland. Amanda. Amanda. You want to come to the seat right there? Oh, oh no, never mind. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Dylan Kennedy. Natalia Meltzer. Caitlin Ann Stark. It's not taking pictures. I just took pictures of her turning the test on everything and it didn't say that. I didn't say Nicholas that. Joseph Sommerfeld. See. Olivia Tutorial.
Dr. Frenreis and the Board of Education, it is my great honor to present to you the graduating class of 2017. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 